Hey, what's going on, everybody? We haven't seen him in a while. It's Fred, baby. Hey, guys, what's going on? Yes, I wanted to bring Fred out because I wanted to show him my thoughts on my new alligator uh, exhibit. I suppose the exhibit enclosure is probably better off. So we're gonna walk down there and check it out, Fred. Yeah. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. We need your expertise. Are we putting this in the right spot? Is this, you know, what's the setup here? Well, Hello? <laughs> you got a lot of options. All right, well, I hope you like it because this is where we started. <laughs> so, what I was thinking, uh, Fred, is I like these cypress trees, you know? So, right yep, now. I do too, my favorite religious tree. Yeah, I just love it. And what I like about it, it's got so much root structure, it really holds the bank together. And I'm going to go with these natural ponds, similar to my Asian turtle pond, and allow the gators to kind of create their own habitat. To, just, just to create. Because you know, they live in here, as, as you know. Um, and is this going to be a, another pond? No, this is going to be part of the gator pond. So we're going to, we needed, we needed the soil for the wetland filter and some other applications over here on this big rec pond. But what's going to happen is those machines are going to stick around for a little bit. And we're going to dig it out. I'm going to dig the pond out here and just kind of wrap around to that tree over there. So it's a fairly good size. Leave this pond on its own. Okay. I'll yeah, I've decided like... I didn't realize you are going to go that big. Yeah, why not? It'd be nice to have a large enough enclosure because gators get large. I want to see the move. You know I like when uh, the animals are moving about. Oh, well, I get that. And they're great in natural uh, situation to... That pond will be separate from this pond. That was the initial thought. Yeah, I mean, you know... Well, that's a good idea. Here's why. Okay. Um, it's a good idea. Let me know um, why. For one thing, the crocodilians always don't get along with each other. Right. They need a place to escape to. That's right. They need room to run. If you got two ponds, and I've had to do this, that's why I realize oh. what can happen. Um, if they can get into another pond and get away from whatever might be the aggressive one, you know, that, that makes more of a, um, a plus. Okay. And so then if they had to, you can always the temporary divider between them. No, I like your idea, and that is something to take into consideration, is making sure that the animal has an escape route, because even the best relationships, sometimes you fight a little bit. I've raised animals uh, from hatchling up to about five or six years old, and they got along great, and then all of a sudden, all hell burst loose, and they become mortal enemies. And without a place to escape, some, you know, an animal's going to get hurt. Okay, cool. So, we definitely don't want animals to get hurt, and that's high stress on the animal and high stress on us if we have to move them. We don't want to do that. We want them to move themselves and be okay. Now, the only thing is, is I got them Badiger affinis in there, some fly river turtles. I'm probably going to want to pull them out. If you're going to put big crocodilians in a beautiful animal like that, I, yeah, I recommend that you don't miss them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it would have to be a big alligator to attempt to eat the big turtle that big, right. but... Well, I want to eat headless are... turtles, you know? Yeah, yeah that, exactly. uh, I have experienced that. So I, this wasn't clear to me, to be honest. Okay. I don't, and I make sure it's clear to everyone else. So you're talking about this big pond dug out here, stretching all the way around here. Yes. But they're going to have free range to go I to think that pond as well. I think that might be the smart thing to do. I wasn't thinking, and it's true, like Fred said, you know, you got to give these animals an opportunity to get away from each other. Um, it's pretty important. So uh, I've got the space. Let's do it right. Well, I mean, you do have the space, and you're on the right track. And, uh, man, you have so many opportunities. It's, yeah. It's, well, you um, know, once this is all built, I really don't need uh, any real access to this area. So I can definitely come out here. We've got, you know, Tom, I got to tell you, Tom helped us out with this. The placement, because he's like, why don't you dig it out here? It's kind of out of the way. It's going to be a little while before I'm able to really attack this. But since we have the machines, they needed the fill. They started it for me. And we've got shade, so there's shade. And there's your water table. Oh, I know. Right Look at there. this, guys. I mean, that's it's, perfect. It's already coming up because. I mean, and, and not only that, it, it's clear coming up. It's coming through that white sand. Yeah. So it's like a natural filter, and um, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, and the natural look is... Yeah, I love that. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. The alligators in the ecosystem here in South Florida actually help other animals out. 
How? In the dry season, they are the ones that make the gator holes. They dig down, the water comes up, they keep digging towards the water, it brings in all the other animals. It'll bring in yeah. the deer, the hogs, the wading birds, the fish, Keep fish they alive. all congregate. So the gator helps them out, but the gator also gets a buffet. So yeah. in many ways, as long as the dry season isn't too long or severe, it's actually a pretty good time to be an alligator because the food <laughs> comes to you. Okay, so two big questions. Yeah. Then. So this means no turtles anywhere in here now. No, not, if you're in a sheep, they a big, Snapper, like alligator your gator snapper, snappers, right? That shouldn't be a problem. And if you're alligators or whatever possibility you're in sheep, if they're full and happy, they won't eat. They're the other not going to waste their time trying to bust up in the big turtle. Gotcha. It's difficult. Well, we're definitely going to keep them happy. What's the second well, question? It's the second question, and now I got a third question too. But second <laughs> question is. What are you going to do with all the turtles in there? Well, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, I, I know a place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, bud. You, I, I don't, don't mind me. I hear you, dude. But, so. you know, the other thing is, you know, <clears throat> you, you want the maintenance factor to be... <laughs> easy. Know, make sure it's easy, um, accessible, you know, you can have an access on at least each side, one on each side. Right. Whatever makes it easier for you and not stressful on the animal. Gotcha. You know, always keep that in mind when you're building a new enclosure because this stuff comes up later and just a Well, I've definitely been around and I've seen what you've done. We've seen what Kyle's done. So I definitely have an idea of what I want to do to make everything easy. Now, guys, there's a couple other things. You know, I have to build an eight foot tall fence and then a six foot tall fence in it. We're going to dig down into the ground. I'm probably going to use big telephone pole that I've acquired and that's going to be the base uh, of my or the posts for my fence. Really strong stuff. Like I said, it's going to go down in the ground, but Fred and I were talking the other day and uh, you never know, the license that I have, the permit to keep crocodilians, I'm allowed caiman, alligator, and dwarf crocodilian. No class one is what Florida says, class one species, what would be Nile crocs, Orinoco crocs, saltwater crocs. No big, large crocodile Not species. No true crocodile. Right. right, but hey look, gators are an impressive animal. I'm excited. We're going to have a lot of fun putting this together in the months and weeks to come. Uh, it's just a fantastic time at Camp Kennan, so we're going to be able to do a lot of cool filming here. What so do you got? Are those FWC rules those about the fence? Those are Florida FWC the... rules. Um, I'm following and abiding by their rules. Uh, that is the state, uh, you know, governing body for all captive wildlife. And, you know, I have an inspector that comes out and I work with, and he's going to make sure that during construction we have the right gauge on the fence, that we have the right depth into the ground, the right height, everything we need to do to be absolutely safe plus talking to guys like fred you know years and years of experience thank you thank you kindly and he's helping okay, me yeah, out yeah yeah making so, me perfect so just what you need more work around here <laughs> yeah i know but you know what guys this is the dream right this is what we're all pushing forward you know fred's been doing it for years i always admired what he's done in his yard that's why we always go film with him uh it's it's basically how can we do uh education and showing people the right way to keep these animals Biting by the law, doing it right, and you guys, many of you out there, one day will take over for Fred and me. So you guys are learning right now. We need people like you to get involved, do some work like this, study up, and just get moving. And beg, borrow, and steal to get things going. I got one more question for what Fred. What do you got? Go so for it. knowing Fred, that this is going to be, you know, pond, pond, pretty big area. How much do you think he could put in here? Like, what would? Can he put gators and caiman, and how many do you oh. think you can well, do you, 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 you can without it being overkill? Miss you know? some species as long as they're similar size. I, Usually, not a good idea. Yeah, um, I, I like to similar to the tortoises, Fred. Not to cut you off, but to answer his question, I, I like to keep the species separate. Uh, right. You know, if there were species of crocodilian, that, like for example, um, in some tributaries in Australia, in the lower parts towards the ocean, the billabongs, you'll find the big salties. The freshwater crocs are way further inland in the freshwater streams before they become brackish water. They won't connect. They will not because the big old salties will eat the little freshies. Yeah. So they keep separate. You don't want to mix too much. No, I mean, if you are in the mix, you can do it with youngsters. Once they get three, four, five feet, yeah. they, they're fighting um, each other. And um, anywhere near breathing size, you, you really can't mix the species or you shouldn't. And um, 
the, the good thing about Crocodilians is once you have your area built, the maintenance, aside from trimming trees and, um, you know, general everyday maintenance, it really isn't necessary. You know, you, you can kind of look at them and observe most of the time. Yeah. But yeah, they need to be fed, you know, in the warm weather, every week or so. But uh, once you have this hard part done, it's pretty it's easy. It's pretty, um, you know, the maintenance is not bad and fun to look at. And I mean, you're on the right track. You Thank are you. lucky that you have uh, your water table is where it is. And, you know, you know how it rains here in the summer. I sure time. do, man. This will be a nice big flood. We just got to make yeah. sure they're contained, and that's easy to do. So, uh, that's one of the things I had to do for Kate. She's terrified right now, but she married a reptile man, so I'm hoping that she'll <laughs> I'm sure she knew it was coming. Well, no. No, she didn't. We're, we're, we got trouble, buddy. <laughs> Anyhow, folks, I just wanted to share this little adventure with you. Um, thanks to Fred for always uh, being a buddy and helping me out. And, uh, yeah, man, we're going to follow this story, guys. I'm working hard out here. We are definitely not kicking back and doing nothing. We are trying to make the ultimate reptile paradise in my backyard. And uh, we're going to educate you folks out there how you can do it. And hopefully give these animals a really good, well, we'll be cheerleaders for them, if you will. They're great animals and we need to protect them. Yep. All right. And they, um, they're beautiful and uh, I'm jealous, man. Don't your, be jealous. This place is, is going to be way better than mine. Oh, come on, dude. This That's is, this is your place, now. too. This is your place, too, buddy. You're allowed here anytime, man. Love this guy. I'd love to see what you're doing, man. It's, right. it's Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much, Fred. This is my pal. All right, everybody, if you uh, haven't, check him out. Where are you at? You're on Facebook. Fred Grunwald, if you want Grunwald to. Grunwald Fred, actually. Oh, yeah, Grunwald Fred. He's uh... Otherwise, you'll hit my grandson, my son. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. And then, guys, thank you so much for your support. If you want to help support these videos, go to patreon.com slash campkennon. Head on over to Instagram and follow me there, at campkennon. And like and subscribe to the videos and go on over to Camp Kennen Army channel for some more hijinks that you won't see anywhere else. See you guys later.